Hello, it's Grandma here. I have a small story and a poem for you today. The story is called The Lambkin. Once upon a time, there was a wee wee lambkin who frolicked about on his little tottery legs and he enjoyed himself amazingly. Then one day, he set off to visit his granny and was jumping with joy to think of all the good things he would get from her when whom should he meet but a jackal? A jackal's kind of like a coyote. And who looked at this tender morsel and said, Lambkin, Lambkin, I'll eat you. But the Lambkin only gave a little frisk and said, To Granny's house I go, where I shall fatter grow, then you can eat me so. The Lambkin thought, the uh, jackal thought was this was reasonable, and he let the Lambkin pass. By and by he met a vulture, and the vulture, looking hungrily at the tender morsel before him, said, Lambkin, Lambkin, I'll eat you. But the Lambkin only gave a little frisk. To Granny's house I go, where I shall fat her grow, and then you eat me so. The Lambkin thought, uh, the vulture thought this was reasonable, and he let the Lambkin pass. By and by he met a tiger, and then a wolf, and a dog, and an eagle, and all of these, when they saw the tender little morsel, said, Lambkin, Lambkin, I'll eat you. But to all of them, Lambkin replied, To Granny's house I grow, where I shall fat her grow, and you shall eat me so. At last he reached his granny's house, and as said in a great hurry, Granny dear, I've promised to get very fat so as that people p keep their promises. Please put me into the corn bin at once. So his granny said he was a good boy, and she put him into the corn bin, and there that greedy little lambkin stayed for seven days. And he ate, and he ate, and he ate until he could scarcely waddle. And his granny said he was fat enough for anything and must go home. But this cunning little lambkin said that that would never do, for some animal would be sure to eat him on the way back. He was so plump and tender. I'll sit, tell you what you must do, said little lambkin. You must make a little drumkin out of a skin, and then I can sit inside it and trundle along nicely, for I'm as tight as a drum myself. So his granny made him a nice little drumkin out of a skin with the wool inside, and lambkin curled up, and he sat snug and warm in the middle, and he trundled away gladly. Then he met with the eagle who ca called out, Drumkin, Drumkin, have you seen Lambkin? And Mr. Lambkin, curled up in his soft, warm nest in the Drumkin, replied, Lost in the forest, and so are you. On, little Drumkin, tum-ba-tum, too. How very annoying, said the eagle, thinking regretfully of that tinnel morsel and how he'd let it slip. Meanwhile, Lambkin trundled along, singing to himself, Trumpet to, trum to, trumpet, trumpet to, too. Every animal and bird he asked gave, uh, got this, gave him the same question. Drumkin, drumkin, have you seen Lambkin? And that little sly Lambkin said, Lost in the soar, forest, and so are you. Ah, little drumkin, tum a tum too. And they all sighed to think of that tender little morsel they had let slip. At last the jackal came limping along, and for all his sorry looks, as sharp as a needle, for he too called out, Drumkin, Drumkin, have you seen Lambkin? Then a Lambkin curled up in his snug little nest, replied gaily, Lost in the forest, and so are you. On, little Drumkin, Tumpa. And he never got any far from, no farther from that because Jackal recognized his voice and he cried, Hello, you've turned yourself inside out, have you? Whereupon he tore open Drumkin and was just about to gobble up Lambkin when up flew the eagle. Up, oh, is that Lambkin? cried Eagle. He's mine. Then all of the other animals and birds ran up crying, Is that Lambkin? He's mine. 
and they began to fight with each other, each one saying he was going to eat up Lambkin. But while they were fighting, sly little Lambkin slipped quietly away. Oh, did I lose my book? No, I didn't lose my bookcase. And here's an old, old poem from William Wordsworth that is very famous. I wandered lonely as a cloud that fights, floats on high o'er vales and hills, when all at once I saw a crowd of host of golden daffodils beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. Continuous as the stars that shine and twinkle on the Milky Way, they stretched in never-ending line along the margin of a bay. Ten thousand saw I at a glance, tossing their heads in sprightly dance. The waves beneath them danced, but they outdid that s those sparkling waves in glee. A poet could not be but gay in such jocund company. I gazed and gazed, but little thought what wealth to show to me to, had brought. For oft, when on my couch I lie, in vacant or in pensive mood, they flash upon that inward eye, which in that bliss of solitude, then in my heart with pleasure fills and dances with the daffodils. All right. I'm going to stop here for now, and uh, depending on how I'll feel, I will uh, do another uh, chapter of uh, Little House. I may have to wait till tomorrow because I'm not comfortable uh, sitting in a chair with my back the way it is. So I'll see you later. Bye.